Well, holy smokers, folks, do we have some drama in regards to Tesla stock recently, okay? I'm like, I haven't seen this type of drama around Tesla stock in quite a while, needless to say. We have so much that has come out over the past few days, and even in regards to last hour around Tesla stock and some drama in relation to one of the biggest short sellers, one of the most famous short sellers in the history of the world has come out and basically we've seen some numbers and they are betting that Tesla is going to go down in a massive way. So we're going to discuss that. We're going to look at the numbers. We're going to talk about that a little bit. We're going to talk about if I think that's a realistic possibility or not. Okay. We got Bitcoin drama in relation to Tesla. We have Kathy Wood stuff in regards to Tesla. Like I said, there has not been this level of drama around Tesla stock in quite some time. Okay. Probably since maybe 2019, which is the year I used to make Tesla videos like every day. And it used to be like always something to talk about with Tesla. So I can, I'll tell you, over the past year or so, it's been pretty lame in regards to Tesla. So there hasn't been anything as far as like like news, crazy stuff, drama. There hasn't been a lot. But man, do we have some stuff to cover today, okay? I am a Tesla shareholder, obviously. Uh, I think everybody watching this video probably knows that. And uh, obviously, it's a long-term investment for, for myself. It's not like it's something I'm trying to get in and out of or something like that. I have 750 shares of this stock. We're doing pretty well on it. Um, however, we've got some stuff to talk about, okay? Do we have some stuff to talk about? So, hope you guys enjoy this video. Hope you enjoy me kind of keeping you guys up to date on all this Tesla drama, which we got a lot to get into. And all I ask in return is that you smash that thumbs up button. That helps us out huge in the YouTube algorithm and things like that. Whenever I look at my stocks, I try to always try to look at the positives and negatives and, and see what's going on in regards to it, okay? Obviously, recently, it's been, it's been kind of tough sledding for Tesla stock, right? Let's be quite clear. We can't Deny the fact that this stock topped out at $900 a few months ago, right? I think it was back in, what was it, January? It topped out at around 900 And since then, it's pretty much been down and down and down. It had a, a nice bounce back. And then it's just, if we pull up a one-month chart, I mean, you know, the, the chart is pretty self-explanatory. It is just down and down and down and down from, you know, about 750 bucks to here today is trading us uh, $576. And a lot of folks are wondering, where's the bottom for Tesla stock? Does it reach a bottom anytime soon? We're going to get into all that in this video. I'll give you my opinion on where I think the stock's going to bottom at and all those sorts of things. Okay. So obviously over the past year or two the valuation of tesla has gone up dramatically right not not like oh it just went up a little bit or something like that right i mean we're talking about in a matter of literally months right this valuation went from about 50 billion to at the peak almost 850 billion that's a move we have not seen by pretty much any public company out there in relation to from around fit eight uh, from around 50 billion to about 850 billion you don't just see that okay you don't just see that let's just put it that way i've never seen it um even in in stocks like nvidia and amazon and companies like that i never saw them jump from from 50 billion to about 850 billion even remotely close to that fast i've never seen it with a stock ever to be completely honest uh, Google, no. FB, no. Microsoft, no. Like nothing. You, you can't even. You can't even. You can't even like begin to compare Tesla to any other stock price in terms of the the way Tesla's valuation went up in such a short amount of time. There's nothing. There's literally nothing. Um, you know, from that 50 billion to 850 billion, it was it was absolutely a historic move that we've never seen, right? And during that time period, did, did Tesla add $800 billion of valuation? I think anybody with a brain will say no. However, they did add a lot of valuation in here, but they didn't get respect for it, right? The company was making tremendous progress during these years, and the company just wasn't getting respect for it, right? So it was due that it was going to make a huge move. That's why I got in this stock, right? It was due to make a huge move, but it's just like that type of move was like, woo! Okay, that was a next level type move there, needless to say, okay? So that's where we kind of start with this whole drama, okay? Then a few days ago, this came out, right? Tesla has suspended vehicle, uh, or excuse me, vehicle purchasing using Bitcoin. We are concerned about the rapidly increasing use of fossil fuels. 
for Bitcoin mining and transactions, especially coal, which is the worst emission of any fuel. Cryptocurrency is a good idea on many levels, and we believe it has a promising future, but this can this cannot come at a great cost to the environment. Tesla will not be selling any Bitcoin, and we intend to use it for transactions as soon as the mining transactions are in a more sustainable energy way, right? And we're looking at other cryptocurrencies. This came out of Elon Musk's Twitter page. This nearly started, you know, World War III. Let's just put it that way, okay? I mean, I can't think of two more um, epic communities and divisive communities out there than the Tesla and Bitcoin communities, right? I mean, you know, definitely, you know, I'm a Tesla shareholder and I know how the Tesla community can get if you say anything negative about Tesla or about Elon Musk, okay? And I know if you say anything negative about Bitcoin, I know how that community can be, okay? And they really go, woo, woo, okay? <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. And so this, like I said, this nearly started World War III, even though the way they went about it was very, very, I would say, gentle in the approach Still, it doesn't matter. Even if you go with gentle approach, there's still going to be a lot of folks that, man, they're ready to boom, okay? That's all I'm going to say about that. And so this this is where the drama starts. And when all of a sudden you have a lot of folks that were invested in Tesla that are also Bitcoin fans, all of a sudden you have definitely some folks out there feeling like they got to pick a side. Where do you pick? Do you go on Tesla side or do you go on Bitcoin side? Uh, some folks are still fans of both and they understand the, the, the reasoning. Some folks are not willing to listen to you. You come out and you say something negative about Bitcoin, they will no longer back you. They will no longer support you. They will no longer do anything, right? Same thing goes for Tesla, right? There's some folks that are just so hard, diehard Tesla fans or Elon Musk fans that if you say even one thing negative about Tesla or negative about Bitcoin, they will not support whatever it is you got going on. There's just, that's factual, okay? And there's some folks that are in between that are understanding and they're, you know, you know, can they can put the shoe on the other foot and they can see both sides, right? And those are the people I have the most respect for, by the way, the people that can put the shoe on the other foot and see both sides. But let's be quite clear, it's not always like that in these communities, okay? And so when Elon Musk came out and said this, it was natural, it was going to negatively affect the stock. And since that time, you know, it's obviously been kind of a rough ride for Tesla, right? Then you have the whole Kathy Wood drama, right? And ARK Invest, right? Kathy Wood is the most uh, known person in regards to discussing Tesla, Tesla's bullish case and things like that, okay? And where things get crazy here, where things get absolutely crazy with the whole Kathy Wood and ARK Invest thing is that their fund is just going down and down and down right now, down over 30% from the peak, right? And it doesn't look like things are turning around anytime soon. doesn't mean they can. It just it seems like, if anything, things are getting worse and worse there, right? If we go to kathywoodstocks.com, which updates uh, basically ARK Invest, their main fund, their top 25 positions on a daily basis, right? We're going to see a lot of these stocks have been going down, and it's been getting worse for a lot of these stocks, right? And so if we look at Tesla, this is by far and away their biggest position. And so if you're in a situation where Tesla continues to weaken, that's obviously a really, really bad thing for, for Kathy Wood and for ARK Invest in general, which adds to potentially even more selling pressure because we've seen outflows of money, right? And so if there's all these outflows of money and all of a sudden you have to sell more Tesla shares or sell more of this share or sell more of that share, it gets into a really, really ugly situation really, really fast, okay? And so you have all that playing out simultaneously in the situation, okay? And so now we get into the biggest thing, okay? If you don't know, there's a gentleman, his name is Michael Burry, okay? Now, Michael Burry got really, really famous for making an immense amount of money on the, the housing crash, 2007, 2009, the, the housing, let's not call it a crash, it's called a collapse, basically, right? Where real estate prices dropped way more than m almost anybody had ever foreseen, right? I mean, it was, it was basically an assumption back, if you go to 2006 or before, it was an assumption that real estate just goes up in price over time. And even in recession times, real estate just goes up and those houses just appreciate over time, okay? And that's just the way it goes. Well, that was all completely broken and shattered in the 2007 through 2009 housing collapse, right? That was a, was a housing collapse where, where we saw housing prices in, in some markets drop 30, 40, 50% plus, right? I mean, we never seen numbers. I mean, no one other than maybe a few people like Michael Burry could have ever forecasted that, right? 
is very easy to look back now in 2021 and been like, oh yeah, that was a bubble that was going on, right? Very easy many, many years after. But I can tell you going into that, most folks did not feel that way. Most folks were piling in, if anything, right? They were piling in. There were FOMO. There was mad FOMO out there for, for, for houses, for real estate. Go buy a second house, a third house. Do whatever you can to get your hands on as many houses as possible because it's going to the moon, man. And that was, that was the thought, okay? And so Michael Burry had a very different belief that everything was going to collapse in a massive, massive way. And he had to wait some time till it happened. But when it did happen, he obviously made a ton of money. They made a, a very famous movie out of it called The Big Short, which I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen. And Michael Burry became, uh, you know, a very... I would say a a very famous person. Let's just call it that. A very famous person in the stock market community for a long, long time to go in the future, okay? People know Michael Burry because of that, okay? And so here we go. Michael Burry of The Big Short reveals a $530 million bet against Tesla, okay? (sighs) I mean, you got to be flipping my flapjacks, guys. That's that's no small number. I mean, we're not talking about just a $10 million bet or something. $530 million bet against Tesla. Oh, my gosh. We got to look at this in detail. I got to share my perspective on this, what's going on here, what I think is about to happen, and so much more. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Michael Burry previously mentioned in a tweet, which was later deleted, that Tesla's reliance on regulatory credits that it generates profits is a red flag, okay? Now, he deleted that tweet. I thought it was a very, very smart idea for, for Michael Burry to delete that tweet, okay? And, and we're going to come back to that kind of in just a moment here, okay? Famed investor Michael Burry on Monday revealed in a regulatory filing a short position against Tesla worth more than a half a billion dollars. Burry is one of the investors, or excuse me, one of the first investors to call and profit from the subprime mortgage crisis is long puts against 800,100 shares of Tesla or $534 million by the end of the first quarter, according to a filing with the SEC. I mean, that number is just hard to even fathom. 800,100 long puts? What? Okay. Investors profit from puts when the underlying securities fall in prices. As of March 31st, Burry owned 8,001 put contracts with unknown value, strike price, or expiration. So we don't know exactly if he's shorting, or not, I shouldn't say shorting, if he's buying put options that are going to expire in a few months from now, or a year from now, or maybe in January 2023. We don't know exactly when. But needless to say, I think he's doing very, very well in this position so far, okay? Burry, whose firm is Scion Asset Management, shot to fame by betting against the mortgage securities before 2008 crisis. Burry was depicted from Michael Lewis's book, The Big Short, and subsequent Oscar-winning movie for the same name, okay? Wow! Okay, I mean, this is different than buying just, or just going short a stock, right? You short a stock, you're just betting that its price is going to go down. He's going put options. So he's putting himself under a time pressure. This is now time sensitive that Tesla stock goes down in a certain amount of time, right? And once again, we don't know if that's over the next month, the next several months, the next year, the next two years. But needless to say, he's he's basically saying that Tesla's going to crash and crash bad, okay? And so far, he's looking correct on this assumption, right? The, The stock has gone from 900 to you know, 500 something now. So far, he's looking very, very good, okay? Now, I think it was good that he deleted that tweet. If I was Michael Burry, I'm not even trying to really talk about this too much, okay? I, you, you don't want to bring any more attention to a stock, really, if you're shorting that stock. Reason being is then you have people that want to just kind of see you lose and might buy the stock just to, you know, hopefully make you lose money on it or something like that, okay? As more automakers produce battery electric vehicles of their own, Fewer basically are going to need to purchase environmental regulatory credits from Tesla, which they have done, obviously. Besides his big short, Burry made a lot of money from being long GameStop. He was long GameStop in that whole situation with the Reddit. I'm sure you guys remember that a few months ago, right? Um, From my understanding, he did very, very well there, right? In the first quarter of 2021, Tesla reported $518 million of basically regulatory credits, 
which Elon Musk's company generally receives from government programs to support renewable energy. It has sold those, to, uh, basically, it has sold these to other automakers, notably Fiat Chrysler, which has needed the credits to offset their own carbon footprint. In the fourth quarter of 2020, Tesla's $270 million of net income was enabled by $401 million of regulatory credits. So essentially, if you back out the regulatory credits, Tesla would have lost money on the bottom line in the last quarter, okay? And so Michael Burry is basically making a bet here that Tesla is going to, uh, you know, have its stock price collapse, okay? Now let me share a little perspective um, that I have in regards to Tesla. Being somebody that's long the stock, right? So Tesla got way pushed up okay and and i spoke out against it and i'm not i'm not very afraid to like speak out if one of my stocks gets where i feel it's very overvalued i will speak out against it i don't care like even like at the end of the day like i'm not moving tesla's market cap up or down like that company's way too big for me to have any influence on over its stock price i can guarantee you that okay it's way out there okay and so if I look at Tesla, when it was 850 billion, it was silly. It was getting pushed up to silly valuations. Now, obviously, people that want to make short-term profits don't want to hear that. They want to hear that it's going to $2 trillion tomorrow, next week, next month. That's what they want to hear. They don't want to hear any, any bear case from anybody. And they, they, you know, if you try to say anything negative, they're like, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about or something like that. It's like, okay. You know, you, you can't even go fact for fact on those type of things, okay? And if you're looking at Michael Burry's case here, obviously on a factual basis, you know, Tesla has been using those regulatory credits heavily, right? Now, where, where things get interesting here when it comes to Tesla is everybody knows the revenue numbers are going to be good, or at least that's the expectation, right? And production is going to be good. And everybody knows that. That's already priced into the stock. You got the stock to go up hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars in valuation because everybody knows that, right? Tesla is now priced like they're going to be the dominant EV manufacturer of the future, right? The, like when you were doing this like 50 billion or 30 billion or 40 billion, you could have made a case like, oh, you know, it has this and this and this. And those are the cases I used to make on why it could become a quarter of a trillion dollar company or $300 billion company, $400 billion company, right? But that was over the next like five to 10 years. Tesla went up $800 billion in valuation in a snap of fingers, in a snap of fingers. And so when you get that type of move, it definitely can set you up for some downside, okay? And so Michael Burry's looking at this and, you know, as the stock was climbing to $700 billion, $800 billion, he was probably rubbing his hands saying, okay, you know, this is getting up to such silly levels that it makes sense to start betting against Tesla stock. Not so Tesla fails not like betting oh tesla's going to go to zero because that that's completely out okay the, the 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 bet against tesla is not tesla stock goes from um you know whatever stock price it's at now to zero dollars the bet is that tesla stock falls 50 percent, 60 percent, 70 percent from where it reached highs right so it goes from you know 850 billion dollar market cap to a 400 billion dollar market cap or a 300 billion dollar market cap keep in mind that even if tesla let's say tesla hypothetically for a moment okay let's say tesla hypothetically falls to a 300 billion dollar market cap okay which would be a dramatic fall even from where we're at here right um that's still by far and away the most valuable automaker in the world right that still like is is exponentially more than ford or gm or any of those are valued okay like you can't even compare those companies right in, in terms of valuation like you just can't right and so that's where things start to get a little interesting here around this stock okay now in terms of, of short-term stock price moves anything can happen here okay but what i have felt with tesla is the hype cycle reached epic proportions around January, right? It was like peak FOMO in Tesla stock, right? We heard the stories. People were, fo you know, people were literally plowing every dollar they had into Tesla stock, right? And people were literally margining money, buying call options in Tesla, anything, anything to get as many Tesla shares as possible, right? When you start hearing stuff like that after things have already moved up exponentially, right? This is as the company hit six hundred billion dollar market cap, seven hundred billion dollar market cap, eight hundred plus billion dollar market cap. That was when peak FOMO was happening. When you start, like I was part of, of, of you know De Tesla clubhouses, and I'm just like listening to people, and just like I don't know what planet they're on. Like like when I start sounding like a bearish person around Tesla stock, you better be scared. You better be really 
scared. That's all I'm going to say. When Jeremy Lefebvre has to be the one to, to you know, say, whoa, whoa, chill, chill out a little bit, guys. That is the moment that you should, you should start to think, okay, I messaged with people. I messaged with people about this stock that are big Tesla fans and shareholders, okay? And I asked them for their honest opinion. And most of them said the move in Tesla stock price at that time was ridiculous. It was too much, okay? These same people, a lot of them, won't come out and say that publicly. They won't do it, okay? They won't do it because they don't want to face the backlash of the Tesla community trying to say, oh, you turned on us. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You're clueless. They don't want to have to face those questions, okay? Um, I'm never shy about my opinion, and I'll always be willing to, to say what I feel, okay? And if somebody doesn't want to respect me for that, don't respect me for that. I Like, it is what it is. Like, move on. Move on with your day. Like, it is what it is, right? But I'll always come out and state whatever I want to state publicly. But I know a lot of people that felt like that move was silly in Tesla. But they wouldn't come out and publicly say it. Okay? And I made videos, and I talked about this many times in, in Millennial Money and many other places, and I even made a dedicated video that a lot of people didn't like, and I got a lot of people questioning, like, oh, you know, and I'm just like, the, the move, it was too much, man. It was too much. It was due to make a big downward move, okay? Now, I feel like it could easily fall into the 400s. I've said that. And, you know, all, literally, you want to know what it takes for Tesla to be in the 400s? NASDAQ falls 3 to 4%. The NASDAQ falls 3 to 4% and Tesla is in the 400s. That's it. Like when you think about it from that context, it's not hard to imagine. You want to know what it takes for Tesla to go into the 300s? NASDAQ falls 10, 12%. Like is it impossible for the NASDAQ to fall 10 and 12%? Like just think about that for a moment, right? And so with Michael Burry, obviously he's already making a lot of money off these puts. And outside of a huge rally in the NASDAQ, I think he could be looking good here um, to potentially make some more profits. Am I interested in buying Tesla puts? No, I am not personally interested in buying Tesla puts, okay? Am I interested in buying Tesla stock at its current valuation? No, I am not. Am I interested in buying Tesla stock if the stock falls 50, 60, 70%? Yes, absolutely, okay? And am I willing to hold my Tesla stock? Absolutely. I don't want to let go of those shares. I don't want to pay those taxes. If the stock goes down, fine. It is what it is in the short term. I'm a believer in that company over the long term. But what I know is that valuation got pushed up to crazy levels. And I can completely understand why Michael Burry wanted to jump in and buy a lot of puts. And um, he's, he's made a lot of money off them. He'll make more money off them. And that is what it is. So much love as always, guys. I hope you always appreciate my honesty in, in talking about a stock. And even if it's uh, a stock I own hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of thousands of dollars and even coming out and, and, and speaking about it. I hope you guys at least respect that and appreciate that. Much love as always and peace.